Good morning, Mr. Davis. You will have 10 minutes to address the committee, sir. You can begin when you're prepared. Thank you. When I'm prepared? Uh, well, unfortunately, I had a derailment this morning. My printer and my laptop didn't want to communicate. Uh, my bifocals are broken, so um, the, uh, the moral of my story is I do understand that things don't always go as planned. Um, Thank you. Chairman Marks, uh, committee members, visiting uh, councillors, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you at, I guess this is your inaugural committee meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody, uh, new and old councillors, um, and uh, like I said, thank you for, for the opportunity. Corporate services um, is probably the most important uh, committee of council that we have. Um, you set the tasks, you set the procedures and the policies that uh, our staff follow and that each and every other committee uses throughout the year and throughout your term. So you're probably the most important um, management um, type committee that we have. And it um, was quite interesting here today to listen to the three earlier presentations. Um, because I don't have my bifocals and because they have really distracted me with some of the great information that they've provided, I'm going to add lib a little bit here today. Um, one of the most important parts of uh, accountability and transparency of the City of Oshawa and any government is the dissemination of uh, information to the public. And I have to note that as of 5 o'clock on Friday, there is not a single copy of uh, meeting minutes from this council since December the 5th. This is an issue that I brought up with uh, staff uh, two to three years ago uh, with regards to missing and late minutes. And um, you just, we just heard from the corporate communications department. I don't think it technically falls under them. I think it's more under clerk services. Um, but I think that that's an issue that maybe this committee should look at as to how quickly those minutes can get uh, um, posted and available to the public. Um, most of us get our information off your city's website. Uh, the numbers that were relayed um, by the last speaker, only 1,800 uh, people follow your Instagram, uh, 1.2 million hits on Facebook. Well, that could be just about anything. Um, but most of us use your website. The website was updated a couple of years ago and is now one of the most difficult websites I have ever seen to find accurate information. Uh, I believe industry standard is you should be able to find something in two to three clicks and if you try and search something on, on the new updated city website uh, it takes literally hundreds of clicks and I would estimate I've spent thousands of hours on it. Uh, for those of you that don't know me uh, I've been involved in freedom of information requests with the city of Oshawa for the past five years. Um, I'll go back and forth and say I and we quite often in this because I, I work with a small group of uh, other citizens. Um, we collaborate somewhat with our uh, FOI requests and uh, the work that we do. Um, we as a group right now have five freedom of information requests under appeal at the IPC. They go back uh, to 2017, 2015, and one even goes back as far as 2013. The City of Oshawa has a long history of uh, not being able to find records when we do a, an FOI request. And the records management system, in my opinion, is uh, sadly um, inept. Um, back in 2013, um, and of course this is where it all began, we had the purchase of property to build the Consolidated Works Depot at 199 Wentworth Street. You then had the AG 1309 uh, report, which uh, strongly suggested that the city overpaid uh, anywhere between 1.6 and 2.3 million dollars of our money. Your money and my money. Taxpayers' money. The um, city spent over $100,000 to hire an investigator. And one of the recommendations in Mr. Rusty Eye's final report was that the city needed to update the definition of what records were and that they needed a new records management system. 
in, I believe, May of 2014, a motion of council um, was made to have staff uh, develop and implement a new records management system, which was supposed to have been done by the third quarter of 2015. We're now in the first quarter of 2018, and we still do not have an updated records management system. That's part of the reason why our appeals are two, three, and five years old at the IPC, because the city can't find information. Your facility management services uh, presentation that I, I just listened to was quite interesting. In particular, their internal technical support program, where they log all tech requests, including conversations, phone calls, emails, etc. Emails, telephone calls, all of those are technically records of the business of the city of Oshawa. And currently, your records management system does not capture many of those things. It's been known since at least 2009 that staff have been regularly deleting emails. And that still hasn't changed. I have records provided through the FOI process, written records from the city, that will acknowledge that at least in 2009, if not earlier, the Auditor General knew it and reported it. The city solicitor knew it, the IT services knew it, and the mayor and council knew it. And it still has not been addressed. The city is sadly remiss in meeting legislated standards through the Municipal Act 2001, um, particularly the Part 5, and through MFIPA. Um, all five of our appeals that are currently in front of the IPC have to do with reasonable search. One of those is in its third appeal, and the city has already been ordered by the IPC on at least two occasions to conduct a further search, and has failed to do so. I think it's imperative that as this council um, moves into budget deliberations, that you understand where your issues are, where the problems are, so that you can properly uh, finance you can properly provide the leadership and the resources to your staff to do their jobs. Ultimately, it comes back to council. It's your responsibility to provide them with everything they need. You can't blame council, or you can't blame staff. You can't hide behind staff like our past council has done. In June of uh, 2018, the city released what I call their admission of guilt statement in which they admitted that staff have been less than transparent in providing us with responses to our uh, Freedom of Information Access requests. They promised the release of all documents by August 23rd, 2018. August 23rd, 2018 rolled around, and uh, the next release available on the city's website uh, provided us with approximately 100 pages, being AG 1309 and um, a message that there are as many as 10,000 more pages to be released and no release date. Um, I've emailed with the city clerk and the city clerk is unable to give me a date as to when those records will be available. So that was a self-imposed deadline that the city put upon itself and has still failed to meet. And that doesn't look good. I really want to work with city council through this committee to improve the relationship between the city and the citizens. I want to work with you to improve the information flow going in and out because that's how we all progress and do better. I can't do that when I've had to go out and rent an office space because I've outgrown my home because of the files that I have over five years. I shouldn't have to do that to get what should be pretty standard documents. I shouldn't have to fight the city's legal team in order to access those documents. And I know that uh, at the end of the previous council, there was a, a motion put forth, I believe, by Councillor Neal to uh, request a report from um, city staff with regards to the FOI process 
how many FOIs uh, they had in front of them. Uh, I don't remember all of those details. But I think maybe it might be uh, advisable that uh, this committee also ask how much money has been spent to keep this information hidden. Uh, how much in lawyers' fees? How much in staff overtime? According to the August uh, 23rd press release, uh, clerk staffs have spent over 1,000 hours, and all they could produce for me. Mr. Davis, your 10 minutes is up. Was 100 pages. Motion to extend. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. You have two Thank minutes, you. sir. Thank you very much. Uh, after five years, I could talk for days, okay? So I, I will try and do this real quick. Um, I believe that we need to be proactive on this, and I believe that the city, uh, this committee particularly, needs to address the lack of a, uh, a records management system. I believe that, I know that you guys have had training from the, uh, the ministry recently. I believe that some of your staff who are charged with FOI uh, responses need better uh, training as well. Um, and I think that that's a, a very important thing that you need to consider now. I think that's far more important than digitizing maps for economic development at this time. You've already had over five years since uh, uh, the Rusty Eye report, um, almost four years since council uh, asked staff to update it, and I think it's time that it, it's actually in the last term fell off the outstanding issues report of this committee, just disappeared. And, and we have to get that back in, in check. Thank you for your time, and uh, if there are any questions, I will gladly answer them. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, we're going to have questions now from the committee. Uh, first question is, is Councillor Neal. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry to interject. Sure. Um, we have a tour at Rotary Pool 1130, and I'm the Chair of Community Services, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to take my leave at this time, but I thought I'd just interject so I didn't walk out rudely. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Neal, your question. Yeah, and this might be a question of staff. Uh, do we not have an outstanding list that uh, usually uh, uh, like accompanies the... Uh, an agenda for Corporate Services Committee? We should deal with the questions to the delegation first, and once the delegation is done, we can ask staff our questions. Okay. Well, I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Davies. Uh, do you ever look at the outstanding list? Quite often. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, do you see anything on the outstanding list that's coming forward that might be of interest? Like, you've listed quite a few things. Uh, as I noted, uh, it used to be on the outstanding list. The uh, update for records management. The name of it changed um, last year and it has now disappeared off the outstanding issues uh, report for this committee. I don't know where it went. So I don't know where that stands. All right. Um, I guess subsequent to that question, I guess uh, when you request uh, like information from the city, like where is my uh, item on the outstanding list. Do you get uh, an answer back? Or have you ever made that request? Or are you just bringing this forward today? No, I have brought that forward uh, in the past. Um, it's quite some time ago, and I can't, uh, I can't recall the, the exact answer. I normally do get a response, yes, but I can't recall the exact answer that I was given at that time. I'd have to go back through my, my records and check. Okay. And uh, through Mr. Chair, I'll be asking staff when the appropriate time is where, where's the outstanding list, and where are we going to, and when are we going to get an updated outstanding list? Thank you, Councillor Nicholson. Uh, Mr. Davis, um, you have a great amount of experience in dealing with FOI requests. Um, I, I learned by trial and error over the past five years. Thank you, Councillor Nicholson. Yes. Um, when the city is found at fault, and uh, the IPC commissioner rules that information must be released. Does the city reimburse the applicant for all the expenses <laughs> involved in getting the information in the first place? Absolutely not. Is that something that you would support? That if the city is found at fault, the city should pick up the cost? Um, generally speaking, and not always, but generally speaking, the city has gotten better, and when they are ordered to do a new uh, release of documents, they tend to not charge us for the additional materials. 
Um, however, we have had no less than six um, uh, fee responses in excess of $11,000, which we simply cannot afford to pay, and that's what the city expects us to pay in order for them to find those records. Okay. Those are my questions at this point. Thank you. Any other questions of the committee? Visiting councillors, Councillor McConkie. Thank you. Um, in addition to questions of the delegation, wh when would I be allowed to request a visiting um, staff person to come to the table? Once all the questions have been exhausted to the delegation. Okay, because I would like to, I mean, this happens, right? We can uh, talk to the clerk who's in the room or the city manager to find out where this got missed. Once all the questions have been dealt okay, with the delegation. Thank you. Any other questions of the delegation? Thank you, Mr. Davis, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I'll take a motion on the delegation. Uh, Councillor Neal? Yeah, and I guess we don't have a report that that would. Uh, just a question to you. I guess we don't have a report that this would refer to, or do we? Would nope. we uh, refer it to the uh, one of the other presentations or any of the correspondence requiring action? We could refer the delegation to staff. Refer it to staff. Yep. All those in favor? Oh, oh, oh. oh, sorry. Discussion on the motion. Um, I, I don't believe in refer to staff unended, open-ended motions um, because I don't know why I'm getting back. Um, I would like to see, uh, my personal view, uh, that a status report be prepared and presented on the ongoing free information inquiries at the next meeting of this committee, including costs and staff time used to date. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that when you give staff a direction, you have to tell them what, what you want them to report on and have a timeline to, to get that back. Otherwise, it will go into the great void and we will see it sometime three terms from now. Um, so I, I'm a firm believer in, in all the motions I'm going to present at this committee are going to be time stamped, as I call it, with a direction and an expectation of when they're to come back. Um, so the question I guess I would put to you, Mr. Chairman, on this motion, if I could, uh, to the staff that are present, I don't know if there's anybody can answer this. Um, if we were to request a, a status report on the current FOI response, could we have that at the next meeting of the committee? Is there some reason that would preclude a, that timeline? Commissioner Adams? Through the chair, yes, we can do that. All right. Um, if it, the mover of the original motion were uh, amenable, could we include that wording in his motion uh, as a friendly amendment? Well, uh, we don't have to make it friendly. You can just make it an amendment. Yeah. All right. Um, I was trying to give him credit, but <laughs> being nice. I'd like to move an amendment to the referred to staff and uh, with the direction that a staff report be prepared and presented on the on on ongoing freedom information inquiries at the next meeting of the Corporate Services Committee, including an outline of staff time used to date and costs of response. I have that written out by for you, by the way. Thank you. Sorry, you have that written out, Councilman? I, I, of course, I do. Mr. Brower, you have a comment? Um, through the Chair, just to note, there was an outstanding Council direction to report back to Council through an information report on the status of the um, uh, appeals in the IPC related to the uh, construction of 199 Wentworth, the COD. So just, just for information, I'd be happy to include that as part of our uh, report. In, uh, presentation overview on city clerk services. Is that particular uh, process part of an ongoing information inquiry process at this time? Sorry, can you say the question again? Um, well, the motion is that that all ongoing freedom of information requests be reported. So, wouldn't, wouldn't that fall into that category? Yes. Okay. okay those are your questions. Thank you. So the first we're going to, oh, sorry, Councilor Hurst, do you have a question? Can I have a clarification of the motion? Um, your motion, Councilor Nicholson, you want a status of all freedom of information requests with the city? All ongoing. All ongoing. Sorry, your microphone's off, Councilor Nicholson. 
Word was all ongoing freedom of information requests. So you if want something's resolved. That I don't want to deal with it. Okay. So you want to know what they are, what they're pertaining to, for clarification? Yeah. What they are, how much we've spent, the time we spent on it, how much this cost us so far, so we can get like a status report on them. Those are outstanding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I needed that clarified. Thank you. Okay. So our first order of business is to. Sorry, uh, Mayor Carter. I just want for clarification uh, uh, to through you to the commissioner. Commissioner, uh, you feel that you would be able to meet the timeline in regards to this request of this motion? Through the chair, yes, we can. And that next meeting would be on February the 4th? Through the chair, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So first we'll, make a, we'll uh, deal with the motion, the amendment on the motion. All those in favor on the amendment? Opposed? That's carried. The next item is the main motion. All those in favor? Recorded vote. Uh, Councillor Neal's called a recorded vote. Madam Clerk. And just before that, uh, I, I still have a question of staff on this. Certainly. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take the vote and then we'll have your question of staff. Okay. Councillor Neal, yeah. Yes. Councillor Neal. Councillor yes. Nicholson? Mayor Carter? Yes. Councillor Guyverson is absent. Councillor Hurst? Yes. And Councillor Marks? Uh, yes. That's five affirmative. Now, Councillor Neal has a question to staff on this subject matter. I wonder if we could uh, have his question now. Yeah. Uh, will we have an updated outstanding list, and will these matters that, uh, uh, through Mr. Chair, will these matters that um, Mr. Davis talked about, would they be on the outstanding list? Like, I know I made the motion in regards to the FOI requests back on council a while back, so. I've just been informed by staff that the outstanding uh, items list is quarterly and will be out in March, if that answers your question, sir. That's the schedule for the outstanding items list. Okay. Uh, I believe Mr. Brower has a comment as well, Councillor Neal. Um, okay. Oh, th through okay. the chair, I could just provide a little bit of clarification on how that item had flowed through uh, committee and council with regard to that. So, um, in May of 2014, there was a um, an, a report that was received, and it related to security and accessibility of electronic records, and that flowed out of the investigation that uh, George Rust I undertook. At that time, the practice was um, when an item. Uh, when a report was written to committee, um, it would flow off of the outstanding items list. So it was reported to, to committee and, and then it was in the hands of staff to track it after that point. Um, what I think Mr. Davis is referring to, <clears throat> pardon me, is the business plan and the business plan updates. And that's the more recent um, uh, tracking that went through committee. So um, the most recent uh, update on that, on the records program uh, re revision and review was um, that it would be presented after the election. Councillor Nicholson, you had to follow up. Follow up. Um, will you be then be providing us with. Oh, oh, oh sorry. excuse me. Sorry, Councillor Neal. I saw your light off. Excuse me. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Councillor Neal. You appreciate that. <laughs> well, when you got a cold, yeah. Or whatever you try and keep it to yourself but um, in uh, in that uh, question I had previous where is the motion that I made to uh, like on the council floor like where is that right now in regards to FOI like what's the status of that and that was made back in September I think uh, Mr. Brown? Yeah, through the chair. We have just actually dealt with um, some of the appeals related to uh, 199 Wentworth, um, and we were hoping to report to Council Committee after we had completed the work to provide the records re related to that appeal. So that was why we had held on the timing. But it is, it is still something on our list to follow up with. Councillor Neal? Yeah, that's, and like there was another, uh, issue in regards to, I'm glad you brought up the Rust Eye thing, because Mr. Rust Eye, uh, through Mr. Chair, you're not aware of this because it was the pre previous term to the previous term, was supposed to do an undertaking in regards to who he was talking to at the region about real estate. Mr. Rust Eye mentioned 
that he was talking to someone specifically at the region about uh, the region wanting to purchase that property on Wentworth. Mr. Rustoy in public records said that he would supply that information. So I'm wondering if that possibly could be done because Mr. Rustoy made the statement he would be doing that undertaking at the at the council meeting. So just throw that. I just, that's Councilor, still not been done. Yeah, thank. Uh, but I think we should leave our questions to sort of the uh, process overview, not sort of to one specific request uh, at this time. So, Mr. Mr. Brown, did you have any comments on that? No. Any other questions, Councillor Neal? Thank you. Councillor Nicholson, you had a question. Your microphone's off, Councillor Neal. I want to simply to deal with the process overview. Um, I'll withhold my question until the item is introduced by Councillor's uh, portion of the, the meeting. Thank you very much. Yes, sorry, Councillor McConkie. I had a question of the clerk um, related to the delegation. I know you've spent a lot of time talking about the FOIs and touched on the records management system that uh, I guess was uh, from 2015 to be updated. Is that a request to have that updated involve a cost to the city and has it been made um, in this budget, 2019 budget? Um, it is included as part of a business plan objective. We have not um, fully fleshed out how that work would be executed. It could involve uh, consulting work, but uh, that um, at this point the objective is there and we are in the process of aligning ourselves internally to understand what work would be involved and how that might be delivered. You heard um, uh, the staff person uh, Mark Robinson describe a software that they're implementing. Um, is there any way that the organization of what you require could piggyback onto that type of software? So the focus of the review at this point is really around governance, looking back to the original direction. And it really does, um, and it's important to establish uh, a revised retention bylaw, the policies and procedures in terms of how staff handle um, digital records, emails, uh, information and databases, all of that work is more at a policy and process level. It isn't at this point, um, it hasn't addressed a, a system um, that could help to support that. So just, just to give some context. So perhaps you could have a conversation with Mr. Robinson and see if there's any fit in any portion of what you require? Certainly. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Sorry, your microphone's off, Councillor Gray. Con Councillor McConkey asked about the records management, so when we can expect that. And the second question I have is, this transaction was five and a half or six years ago. Why don't we just release the information? Okay, through the chair. Um, that is actually a, a very valid point. The, the, the gap in time um, and the ability for us to look at the records and what might be considered sensitive or confidential does change. Um, the other aspect I should note too is that in, um, I believe it was in, in August, uh, we had sought council approval to waive solicitor client privilege and related to the records in that, in that purchase and that allowed us to uh, um, uh, put a different lens on how we evaluate the information to be disclosed and in, in effect it allows for greater information to be disclosed and uh, the direction was that um, you know obviously we still can we need to ensure that we don't expose the city to any litigation or potential litigation but beyond that if there isn't that threshold we would be looking at the mandatory exemptions which would be personal information or third-party information so we have uh, tried to put a, a very open lens on it since that council direction and working through those records to make disclosure but as noted, it was just simply the volume and the, um, the amount of other work we have ongoing. It's the same business unit that supports the election and the uh, orientation program. So it's just simply a matter of resources to get the work done. So it's strictly resources at this point? And, we, and we're not asking for additional resources. We have a solid work plan and, and we're working towards um, release. So the delegation had asked, had said that the city said we're going to release everything by August some 23rd, day, yeah. 23rd mm -hmm. and we weren't able to accomplish right. that. Correct. Do you anticipate that will be done shortly? I do, yes. Certainly. Within so this shortly quarter. is? This quarter. 
this quarter, so yes. sometime between now and March. Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Councillor Nicholson, your microphone, sir. Just so I'm clear, so I, I understand clearly that so we're going to get that information released no later than March 31st, 2019. If barring any other issue, which we would certainly communicate. You'll be back here asking for an extension if you can't meet that deadline. Would that be correct? Yeah, so, so the, the decision to release is, is delegated um, under the provisions, but certainly we'll keep counsel in the loop on that. Yep. Clarify that last answer to me. The decision on whether something is released is delegated to me. To the clerk as part of the FOI process. And if council wanted to withdraw that delegation, what would council have to do? It would have to rescind the delegation bylaw with respect to that. Strangely, that's one of the items I had listed on my agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, just a second thing. Um, and again, this really deal doesn't really deal with uh, the public, but uh, many bills were not members of council during this ongoing, I use the word process, mm. for any other wording I could use, um, what would uh, we have to do to have the entire paper trail that occurred from the start of this process uh, forwarded to members of council if they so requested it? That's for a motion. All right. I will raise that under items to be raised by other councillors at the end. Thank you. Is that your question, Councillor Nicholson? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mayor Petrie. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to ask um, um, the City Clerk um, if we can get a, a status report or at least uh, just uh, an understanding of uh, when the process started, how long it's been. Yeah. With respect to 109 Wentworth? Yep. Okay. How long has it been offhand? Do we know? Since the uh, the issue has uh, has been uh, considered by clerks um, through the chair, we do we do track um, obviously the disposition of FOI requests and their status, and we have the information. Okay. Would it be reasonable to say that it's been close to half a decade? Um, I think it depends on the particular um, request. Again, this is some of these decisions are, are well before my time, and uh, um, but certainly we have that that uh, uh, history. Okay. Um, we also we would also have the history of whether the legislation has changed in the last half decade. Uh, to my understanding, it hasn't. That's correct. Okay. So my question through you, Mr. Chair, then would be, when you uh, make the comment as to the changing sensitivity right. um, of who, if it's not the legislation? Is it of the council and staff? Um, possibly. Um, okay. it, 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 again, I wasn't involved in, in some of the earlier requests. I can only really speak to what I've been you know, involved with in the last couple of years. Um, but uh, um, again, with the direction from council, it's allowed us the opportunity to um, pr provide much more of uh, the information that the requester is looking for. And uh, there isn't the, the, the risk given the passage of time with respect to litigation, but certainly we still put that lens on there. Um. Okay, um, there are many other questions, but I think the answer is clear that through you, Mr. Chair, uh, in what the clerks uh, advised, that uh, this is not a legislative matter at this point. This is a question of council and staff. Thank you. Any other questions of the committee? Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on. Correspondence requiring action. Mr. Chair. Yes, sorry, Ms. Uh, Mayor Carter. Uh, Corp. Uh, Corp. 1903 referred to staff uh, for a report in regards to checking about um, with fire and also just regulations, uh, the standing regulations at this particular time, and hopefully. Uh, have a report back uh, to committee sometime in May or June as this event doesn't take place until the month of November. 